Uh, we are with Valio today, and I have Sam, who's the engineer with Valio. Sam, thanks for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sam, what do we have here? So here, what we have, uh, what we're calling is Valio Scala, scanning laser. It's our automotive grade uh, implementation of a laser scanner. Uh, <laughs> This is what we're going to be using, or this is what we're using in our Cruise for You demo, which is our semi-highway autonomous vehicle. Um, this has the capability of classifying a pedestrian up to 80 meters and classifying a vehicle up to 150 meters with a 145 degree horizontal field of view and a 3.2 degree vertical field of view. Um, the module that you see is all it is. There's no other electronics in the back of it. There's no computer running in the background. It's about four inches deep or so. And it will be mounted uh, around the lower end of the vehicle, kind of lower grill. And we're expecting it to see it in production, in, in OEM production in the next couple of years. So what, what do you think is the differentiating factor when compared to all the uh, likes of what Ford has announced with uh, Velodyne and uh, the other LiDAR tech companies? So Velodyne itself or other uh, laser-based technologies are more or less a on a roof mounted laser scanners. They are 360 degree and have uh, uh, 32 or 64 lasers. Um, functionally speaking, they are capable lasers, but at the same exact time, this is an automotive and we have to speak aesthetically also. So what we've done is we've not only turned that kind of laser into an automotive grade that can withstand all sorts of har harsh weather and long term, at the same exact time, it is well placed and the driver most of the time would not notice that it's, it's presence while it's doing a lot for the vehicle. What do you look at the, how do you look at the cost competitiveness of the system when compared to the others? We, and, and every time we launch a new technology, especially with this one, we have to be cost competitive to the current technologies that have been in the market for 10 or 15 years. So it will be very cost competitive in comparison with the current camera systems or the radar systems. Uh, thank you. But you've been here with the, you've been at CES for the last three days. So what is your take on what's the, what's the feel here about all these technologies. We're getting a lot of attention to as far as the laser scanners just because people are realizing the capability of the sensor and how much data we can get out of it. The fact that it's able to classify uh, a, a pedestrian, uh, a motorcycle, a car, a truck, an SUV or a standing object at the same time in relation to the vehicle we classify the relative speed direction. It's a lot smarter sensor than most of the sensors that are currently on the vehicles right now. So how does the data fusion happen with this So, uh, for a surround 360 degree view or if you're going to do a mapping of the place? so This sensor itself is an independent sensor uh, as far as that kind of a data. Uh, it is capable of taking a little bit of a fusion if that's needed be. At the same exact time, we're envisioning a, uh, a modular solution where all the sensors on the vehicle are communicating with the uh, center module that's taking in all the data and making the decisions to as far as what the car should do. So going forward, so what do you think is... Uh, the takeaway from this CES for you? From this CES, uh, we're moving into an autonomous vehicle at a lot faster rate than people are expecting. People are expecting uh, in 20 to 30 years we have a full autonomous vehicle. It seems like it's moving a lot slower into the 2020 and 2025 rates. You did say uh, this is hitting the market in the next couple of years? Yep. Okay, sounds good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yep, have a good day.